Good evening from uh, Europe to all our audience. Um, my name is Johan from uh, Niguru, and I will be your host for this webinar. Co-host is Sheila, and she will manage uh, questions during this uh, event. And our special guest is Dr. Lars Blond, who is a, a shoulder and a knee specialist from Copenhagen in Denmark. Please note that the chat is private, but uh, Sheila will deal with any of uh, your questions via chat. And then we will have an open session with uh, Dr. Blond after the event. Please, um, will you indicate in the chat whether you can see the introductory slide and if the sound is good? And uh, then I will hand over to Sheila uh, while, while everyone settles in and she will introduce the speaker. Okay, hello everybody. I don't see any chat. So if you could just look to the right of your screen and open the chat and just tell us that you are there and that you can hear us. Before we start, we don't want to give a webinar if you can't hear and see it. Okay, excellent. Thank you very much, Nicholas, Alison, Debbie, and the others who will be coming in shortly. So you can hear and see. That's fine. So what, what we'd like you to do is put your questions in as we go along. If there's anything that I feel that needs clarification, I'll put that in. Hello, Catherine. I'll put that, uh, uh, I'll put clarification in the chat. And then at the end, I'll try and put all the questions together and Dr. Blunt can answer the questions all at once rather than being distracted with questions in the middle. Okay, so um, we, I'll just quickly bring in Dr. Blunt just to say hello, and then we're going to put his slides on and we're going to turn his video off because it just makes it easier to just see the slides. Okay, so Lars, if you could bring our speaker on for us, please. Hello. Thank you very much. Can you hear me? Hello, Lars. Yes, we can hear you oh, fine. Great. Thank you very much. So we have an audience who are very happy to, I'm sure, see you. And what we're going to do is um, put your slides on now, and you and I will be in the background but um, we'll turn the video off, all right? Great. So, hello everyone, and thank you for attending this webinar on uh, Plyka. So, uh, yeah, the funny thing about the Plyka is that uh, it is actually, uh, nevertheless, there's only uh, quite uh, rarely study upon this plica and um, also if you go to congresses and symposia it's uh, only a very few uh, session that has been upon this topic even though it's uh, a daily thing in your practice Moreover, uh, I know uh, orthopedic surgeons who don't believe that the plica can cause any problems in the knee. So, um, what is a plica? Yeah, it's an inward fold of the lining of the capsule, also called the synovium. And it's actually rudiment of fertile tissue. You know, during fetal life, uh, the knee is actually three chambers, and then uh, it merges into one chamber, one chamber, and and the ball that separate these different chambers, they are absorbed more or less, and if it's less, what is left is some plicus. So actually, the the plica can cause a problem. Uh, I mean, nearly all uh, people have uh, some kind of plica in the knee, uh, and still it's rare that it causes problem. But when it causes problem, it's uh, typically pain and 
catching, plunking, and clicking, and eventually can also cause this giving way situation. We say there's four types of plica, uh, and uh, actually there is a fifth, and I will come back to that later. The most common is the infrapatellar plica, the next, the mediopatellar plica, the superpatellar plica, and the lateral plica. The three uh, first I will mention more closely. However, the lateral plica, it could be that it's more common that you see in the literature. At least from my experience, you um, you never see the, uh, the lateral plica if you just look through your standard portal in the knee. You, you look from the lateral portal, meaning the outer, outer side portal, and uh, only rarely you shift to the inner side portal. However, if you do that, you will recognize that there is uh, not that rarely that there is a lateral plica. So I mentioned this uh, fifth type of plica, and this is a plica lying posteriorly. That means in the back side of the knee. And this uh, small plaque, or oh, it's not small actually, it's uh, it's quite huge, but uh, it can act as a valve in front of the entrance to a beta cyst. And I will mention it briefly later on. So, in respect to the infrapatellar plaque, infra that means below, and patella that's the kneecap. So it's a, a plaque on the, the kneecap. And you see it more clearly here. Someone has uh, cut through the patella or the kneecap, so it's divided into two and open up the knee. And the first thing you see is this infrapatellar plica. It lies just uh, in front of uh, the anterior cruciate ligament, the ACL. So um, this plica. It stretches from the femur to the hover fat pad. And um, it is, um, uh, it uh, actually uh, is uh, a quite substantial structure that, that links uh, this uh, fat pad to, uh, to, the, to the femur. And it's also linked from the lower pole of the kneecap, but you can see that more clearly when you look here, when you see it from the side, you see that it, uh, if you look at the femur, it starts as a string, and then it become more uh, uh, V-shaped or fan-shaped and stretches up to the lower part of the patella and to the uh, lower part of the ligamentum patella. Actually, uh, Thomas Smallman from the uh, US, he has done some uh, good studies on this plica. And um, here we see uh, the uh, Hoffa fat pad uh, actually moves during uh, the stretching and flexion. And this is due to a study from Smallman who injected uh, some contrast into the Hoffa and did uh, a radiograph and saw how it uh, clearly moved and how the uh, plica stretched out. So um, actually, if this plica somehow gets too short, it can give traction into the Hoffa fat pad. The Hoffa fat pad is filled up with nerve endings. And therefore, it uh, might cause anterior knee pain. And typically, it will be pain in extension or during deflection. But it can also cause pain at stair climbing. And you can have, you can have these uh, clicking, cracking, and crunching phenomenon. So uh, typically, this also occur during uh, adolescence when you grow very rapid and uh, somehow the plica cannot uh, stretch out fast enough and you get this uh, anti-knee pain situation. 
So what can you do about it? What about physical therapy and steroid, uh, corticosteroids for this? I don't really believe in this, and I think that uh, you you can do arthroscopic excision. You don't need the plica. The hoffer can move fine uh, even without the plica. So um, yeah, you might go in and take it out. Then there's a medial patellar plica, or just the medial plica. Medial, that means inner side. And this is the plica that we talk about when we say that it's a plica syndrome. And um, yeah, you see it more clearly here. Again, the knee has been opened up. You see in the top of the knee, there's the backside of the patella, the kneecap. And you see uh, the arrow points out this uh, 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 bow-shaped uh, plica, curved plica, and it stretches from the underside of the patella to more deep in the knee into the lower part of the half a fat pad. Here yeah, is an actual view. Uh, in, in the left, you see. Uh, how this plica can get entrapped between the femur condyle and the patella. And you also see it here in the arthroscopic situation. Uh, you have to uh, remind yourself that this knee during arthroscopy is filled up with water. And when it's filled up with water, uh, the plica uh, seems not to be entrapped even though it might be. So how does this plica uh, become inflamed? inflamed? Yeah, typically it's just a small blunt injury or it could be a twisted trauma. It can also be inflamed by too much activity for too long time. And um, actually also previous arthroscopy can uh, cause this problem. You see it sometimes doing ACL uh, reconstruction, where you somehow um, uh, push this plaque and so it becomes inflamed. Um, yeah, and this is just uh, demonstrating the same. The same thing you see on the photo on the left. You can clearly see how this plaque is entrapped and in in uh, not 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 so rarely actually you can actually see how the plica uh, tends to damage the cartilage because it simply uh, slides all the time over the cartilage so uh, the classical symptom for this medial plica patient is pain on the inner aspect of the patella and maybe also these burning sensations and it's a problem uh, during stair climbing it's a problem with prolonged bending and that can also be this clicking catching and clunking phenomenon. and um, then uh, you can also have this giving way situation So how do you actually make the diagnosis of having a plica, medial plica? Um, it's, it's more more easy than the infopatellar plica because the infopatellar plica, you're not able to palpate. You can see this on MRI scan, but you cannot uh, clearly on MRI scan see if it's inflamed. The medial plica, you only see that in 14% of the cases if you do a standard MRI. But the clim clinical examination is not that difficult because if you uh, take your thumb, you can roll the plica beneath your finger. And uh, if the patient responds by saying, ah, yeah, that's just the pain that I feel, and you can try to compare with the other knee, then it somehow indicate that it is the plaque that causes the problem. You can also bend the knee because if you bend the knee, 
the plica will go posteriorly. That means that it runs over the medial femur condyle and is localized, localized more posterior. And if you move your thumb to the most posterior area, the patient will say, oh yeah, it, it, now it hurts in this area. But then it doesn't hurt on the inner aspect of the patella. So that's a clear way to uh, make the diagnosis. Also, you can uh, have this uh, anamnesis with uh, a small trauma. Uh, the patient will become good uh, within a few days or weeks. And then after this uh, latent period of uh, no pain, uh, then the progression of the pain starts and uh, later on we're going to speak upon which kind of uh, treatment you can do for this and uh, i believe personally that the corticosteroids work very well in the acute phase that means perhaps within the first months or two however later on when when this starts to become painful again then it's because that uh, fibrous tissue grow into the plica and you become chronical uh, inflamed and steroids do not work in this situation. And eventually you can see that there is uh, too much uh, effusion, too much fluid in the joint. And for the management of this, um, actually there has been studies upon physiotherapy on this. You could believe if you train your uh, VMO, uh, the, the inner uh, muscle of your uh, quadriceps, then somehow you can uh, pull out the uh, plica from being uh, trapped. However, the result of physiotherapy is not very good and um, many will continue to have pain. Then there's a corticoid uh, steroid injection, and I mentioned that uh, beforehand, and then there's surgical removal. And um, actually, we have to uh, acknowledge uh, Dr. Schindler for making a very good review upon uh, this plica problem. And he actually did a meta-analysis too, looking upon 23 case series. And what he found was that about 90% uh, actually improved after having removed the plica. However, 10% failed or uh, they even deteriorated. Then there's the super plica. And super, that means above. And that means above the kneecap. And um, this is not very common. It's actually a quite rare uh, disease that the plaga is common, but as a disease, it's uh, quite rare. But some patients, they complain of pain in the area above the kneecap. You see here, uh, again, the knee has opened up and the arrow points upon this curved uh, plica and it's uh, high in the knee. You see an, uh, uh, a picture from a atroscopy view. Here the camera is uh, above uh, the trochlea, above the, the top of the knee and you see it's localized uh, very high. Here you see how it can get entrapped uh, between the femur and the quadriceps and sometimes it's mistaken as a quadriceps uh, muscle or tendon injury. And we have to analyze ankle uh Sheila's ex-husband, for being a, a pioneer in this field and um, yeah, don't forget about this. So it's uh, typically pain uh, and catching during deflection and it's pain localized above the patella. 
And what about the treatment for this? Yeah, again, fusion therapy, maybe you can do some stretching and corticoid steroid injection, but uh, late management will be surgical removal. Then, back to the Baker cyst. Actually, we have made uh, uh, previously an article on this, and you can find it uh, by this link uh, beneath. And uh, as I mentioned, it, uh, it acts, uh, the plica uh, posterior in, in the knee, it acts like a, a wave. So fluid can go into the Baker cyst, but it cannot escape. And uh, the treatment for Baker cyst is not open surgery from behind. It is atroscopy where you go and remove the plica and thereby remove the valve and uh, slowly the Baker cyst will uh, uh, shrink and become uh, non-problematic. So remind that. Good. So uh, I guess we're going to see this uh, small uh, video. It's not a video in uh, 4K quality uh, since it's an old video but it uh, clearly demonstrates the superpanelar plica. So can we switch to that? Yeah, here you see we are again, uh, you know, this time we, we see the knee from above and what you see uh, is the patella that articulate with the trochlea and then you see this big uh, C-shaped structure and this is the superpanelar plica and you can imagine how this can get entrapped beautiful video and now the knee is bent and you can imagine if there was no fluid in the joint it will get entrapped so thank you That was very good, very excellent presentation. Thank you, Lars. Um, what what we have now is um, just a couple of handouts we want to give you, give the audience. The one is just the contact details for Lars, which will allow you also to get access to his website and see what other publications he's got. Um, Lars Blond is... Um, He's a shoulder specialist and a patella specialist, but I mean, and a knee specialist, but within the knee field, the things relating to the patella are his special interest. So um, you're hearing it from somebody who sees a lot of plaque and a lot of patella problems. Um, Johan's just going to pop into the chat the CV, which. Um, I don't have the controls, it'll come up in a minute. And we also have a reference that you might like. Um, I can't remember which one it is, but you'll get it in a minute. <laughs> so if you click that, you'll get the CV. Um, just the link, it's just the link. And the other one, oh yes, is just an article that Lars wrote for uh, the Niguru on um, how he prefers to operate to cure Baker's cysts um, because of, of this valve-like action. Okay, so let's bring Lars back on again now um, and we can go through some of these questions. Okay, I'll just go back a little bit. Can Johan, would you mind putting Lars on to camera and audio? That's grand. We can leave the presentation there in case you want to review anything. The, the first question we were asked, Lars, you don't mind me calling you Lars, I'm sure. I know For sure, very, sure. No problem. Very casual about these things. Um, Debbie was asking what causes a superpatella plica to become symptomatic. Yeah, uh, um, 
actually uh, my oldest son he has this problem right now and uh, he had a hit during a uh, soccer where someone uh, put his knee into his uh, uh, area just above the kneecap and uh, yeah it seems to be giving him a lot of trouble so we consider that it's going to be removed surgically but it's uh, typically a blunt trauma i think so a blunt trauma and then it becomes inflamed from that and then yeah. it starts to become symptomatic okay yeah. um and the other question that we have here is do you uh what do you think about prolotherapy or prp uh, for plaque problems I, i'm sorry i don't know what problem therapy is okay um it's probably not not the terminology that you use in copenhagen but let's talk first about prp yeah. is this something that you would uh, even think of the situation is that uh, i haven't been so much into prp since some of my colleague has uh, used that and uh, in Italy some years ago it was extremely popular and uh, later on it has become less and less popular uh, I don't know really how but uh, lately I have been focusing on uh, stem cells or uh, lipogems and it seems like it's uh, somehow similar to PRP, however, it works better and for prolonged time. But uh, you so can say PRP is uh, the, the, the uh, it seems to work a little bit uh, like steroids, perhaps a little bit better. But uh, mm -hmm. I do not consider it as a miracle. Okay, so um, PRP stem cells would um, have anti-inflammatory actions and and yeah. make the whole thing settle down so yeah. prolotherapy i think is more related to tendons it's uh, injecting an irritant into tendons i i have not heard of anyone using it in a plica and, and I, the logic doesn't fit for me but I, i'm happy to be corrected so are there any more questions is there anything else anybody wants to know we we didn't have slides of the lateral plica did you want to mention anything more about that what I understood was that with the standard keyhole surgery, you kind of go put your instruments in over it so you don't see it anyway. But does it become symptomatic? Do you have any symptoms with a lateral plica? Yeah, I'm, I'm sure you have. But you see, uh, I have to admit that uh, in those patients where I have removed the lateral plica, it has also uh, been in uh, concomitant to other uh, surgery for anterior knee pain. It could be uh, distalization of the patella, trochloplasty, uh, uh, lateral lengthening or something. So I actually don't know if it was a plica that mm. helped uh, be taken away or it was the other surgery. But okay. the, the lateral plica is uh, not very big. It's a mm. small one compared to the infopatellar plica and the medial plica. Okay. That's cool. I don't think there are any more questions. Anybody want to ask a last question? Oh, here we are. Um, Debbie is asking whether the suprapatellar plica and the medial plica have similar symptoms. Are the symptoms similar? No, no not really, because the, 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 the suprapatellar plica, that, that is localized uh above the patella and it's during deep flexion that it causes the problem mainly uh while the the, the medial plica is more on the inner aspect of the knee so uh, and and i don't think the superpatellar plica tends to give the same uh, giving way situation but i'm not sure upon this because i rarely see this problem okay excellent all right, I think we're just about there. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Um, Thank you. I see that, that you've um, clicked onto the reference for the Bakers, so that's useful. Lars, thank you very much. That was a super presentation. Thank you. And um, re pleasure. remember that 
that you and I will have a short um, debrief afterwards and I'll send you the link on an email. All right. Perfect. Thank, Thank you, you everybody. Uh, Johan, do you want to, to switch the video, the webinar off? Um,